I don't know about you. I don't know what you guys hear. But it seems like it doesn't stop. So to give you a little bit of an understanding of what the last week, less than a week actually, five days, what the last five days looked like, as far as news, at least the things that I can remember, Bezat Hashem, to tell you. Last night, a friend of mine from Eretz Israel tells me, do you know this person by the name of Michael? And I say, I don't know who he is. And he says, you didn't hear what happened in your own town, in your own city, in Miami. Not really my own city. It's about 40 minutes from my house. But I said, no, I have no idea. Young boy, 15 years old, one day before his 16th birthday, was locked out of his house, went to his friend's house that was on the top floor above him. He was on the 8th floor, I believe. He went to his friend's house on the ninth floor. And he figured that he can climb down from his friend's balcony, from the ninth floor, to his floor on the 8th floor. Whether he's done it before successfully or not, I have no idea. But the reality is that you only have to fail one time in order for it not to be a good idea. And unfortunately, Hashem Yerachem Alenu, this young boy failed at reaching his destination and fell from the ninth floor to his death. Young, cute, beautiful Jewish boy went to Hebrew Academy. Mamash, I look at his face. I never saw the kid. I started crying. He had his whole life ahead of him. Who knows what he could have done in this life? How many people he could have helped do tshuva? How many books he could have read to give nacha to Hashem Barach? But of course Hashem does what he does for a reason. Of course he does this for the good. Of course there has to be good in this, even though it creates so much sorrow. If that wasn't enough, the night before... I get a phone call from somebody else, tells me I need help, help, help. Okay, mayday, mayday, mayday. Usually when somebody says mayday, we think, okay, what can we, we can do something about it. Tells me, yes, a man that is, was lived a orthodox from life. Orthodox from life, his whole life, religious, more than you. Synagogue, tefillin, all the nice things that... On the exterior, if you saw him, maybe you call him rabbi. Decided that one day, just simply decided that he wants to have a second relationship. The relationship with his wife wasn't enough. So he decided to have a second relationship with another woman. But it's not enough to have another relationship and cheat on your wife. He wanted to have a relationship with a Goya, too. It's not enough to bring Busha to the family, bring Tsar to Aboreid Barach. It's not enough. He wants to go out with a Goya. Now, while he's telling me the story, I'm praying. What am I praying for? I'm praying this guy is related to the other guy that called me four, three days before him with the same exact story. I'm praying it's a, he's related to the other guy. He just doesn't know that his uh, brother or cousin or somebody else told me already the story and I was already crying last week. But then he drops an atomic bomb. When I ask him, so how long has this been going on? He goes, no, it's, it's, it's relatively recent. I said, ooh, maybe he doesn't know. Maybe I know something he doesn't know because the other one is not recent. I say, oh, so how many kids does he have with the Goya? He goes, no, nothing. He's just, uh, just, uh, I said, Hashem Rachem. This is the second story in one week. The other guy that came a week before him has already three kids with the Goya. He had two lives. One Jewish family, one Goy family. Orthodox more than you. Shul, be it, everything. Live the lie and Hashem Yerachem Aleinu, this is what's happening. Now, if that wasn't enough bad news, Mutzei Shabbat, we found out that one of the Avrechim that goes to the Kolel that we know in Yerushalayim, Lo Pachot Velo Yoter, both of his parents got murdered with cold blood. 
some Arab terrorist decided that he wanted to make them a victim, came to their house on the ninth, on the ninth floor, seventh floor, something like that, killed both of them in a vicious way, left with no trace. Mamas like the mafia. The police, one of the uh, family members is in the police, was in the police for almost 20 years. He says, I've never seen anybody do such a clean murder. Usually they leave something, a hair, or this, or that, nothing. Mamash, like the Shemir Achem Le'Abdi, the movies. Two innocent Jewish people murdered in cold blood. Frum, Shomer Torah in Mitzvot, already older, about 70 years old maybe. Figure they have, the, this is their uh, best of their years. And if that didn't make things bad enough, one of the Avrech at the funeral is crying hysterical, him and his brother, and he says something that makes everybody else cry. That we have a lot of Musar to learn from. He says, you know, my Ima, his Ima, she hasn't left the house in years. Why? She was scared to death to leave the house because she's already dodged the bullet three times. She was part of around terror attacks three times already. Three times, those terror attacks right next to her. To such an extent that she got traumatized, she didn't want to leave the house. For years she hasn't left the house. He says, my Ima hasn't left the house, but Hashem Yerachem. Someone was sent to the house. He says, Ima, you didn't want to leave the house, but Hashem sent somebody to the house. Aben Torah can teach you Musar even during an alvaya of a cold-blooded murder of his own mother. To teach you that Midat Adin of Hashem Barach, the Olmek Adin, the depth of the judgment, there is no escape from it. There's no escape from it for all of these fools that think that they can escape Hashem. There's a verse in the Torah. There's a verse in the Torah in the Prophet Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah tells Am Yisrael what Hashem told him. He says, is there such a person that can hide and conceal himself from me? When there's a judgment in Shamayim, there's nothing that a person can do. And this Rabotai is a very big Musa for all of those people that cry over spilled milk about the suffering they have in their life. They lost money, so they think, oh, if I would have done this, and if I would have bought that, and if I would have went there, and if I would have gotten that, then it wouldn't have happened. That's actually the avak, the, the actual, at the very least, the dust of kfira. That's the beginning of kfira. That's the beginning of heresy, to think that you could have done something to escape the wrath of Hashem. If I would have climbed here and if I would have gone over there, it wouldn't have happened. Wrong. Not only wrong, you're starting to be a kofel. Not only it's wrong, you're starting to dig yourself a hole you may not be able to get out of because you probably don't know you're in it. If I would have called him and he would have called me, maybe we would have gotten married, maybe we would have gotten this. No. No. If Hashem wants it to happen, it's going to happen. In Koch Ba'olam, there's no power in the world that can do something if Hashem does not allow it to happen. Of course, we have Koch HaTfilah, the power of our prayer, but that prayer is in essence supposed to be used in order to change us. When a person prays, he's not convincing God to change. God doesn't change. We learn this even from Bil'am Rasha. Bil'am Rasha says, what do you think, Hashem is like a man and he changes his mind? He doesn't change his mind. So this is, gives us a big kashya, this gives us a big uh, problem. Why? So what do we pray for? Why are we praying if Hashem doesn't change His mind? 
Chazal teaches us we pray because through the prayer, if it's a real prayer, if it's a meaningful prayer, if it's a worthy prayer, that prayer is going to help you do tshuva. Tshuva means you become a new person. The new person doesn't deserve the negative decree that the old person had. So Hashem is not changing his mind. He's just giving the person what he deserves. This new person doesn't deserve the bad decree. That's all. Old person still deserves.